that is a 4-3 victory over the New York Islanders in the shootout. Uh, extending, uh, not extending, yeah, extending our uh, streak of winning a, uh, of uh, gaining at least a, at least one point on home ice to, uh, to 16 games. See, this is how I cope with that shootout loss against, against Vegas a few nights, uh, a few weeks ago. Welcome back to everybody. I'm your host, 100 Bex, and to, and to most people, uh, the one word to describe that game between the Bruins and Islanders was sloppy. But to me, someone who is currently in the middle of uh, doing several final essays is and doesn't really have time to and truly really delve it, and doesn't really have time to overanalyze a Bruins game, game, even though that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I would prefer to use the word silly. This game this game was kind of, this game was kind of funny to watch. That wasn't the most fun game that the Bruins have played all season? No, not necessarily. I would say, I would still say that the the Rangers game earlier this season was the best. Missed. Missed. That game, that game was tremendously fun. But this game was, this game wasn't fun. It was funny. I'll get, I'll get into it. I'll get into it in a little bit. First off, the, uh, the Bruins played without David Krejci. He has been, he's been said, to be day to day with a lower body injury, Jim Montgomery has said that eh, if this was in the playoffs, uh, Krejci would be playing. But for right now, we're trying to mitigate his. Eh, we're trying to make sure that he doesn't get eh, hurt even further, which tell which tells you kind of uh, how bad uh, about this is the severity of the uh, of the injury. It's not awful. It's more so just like harm reduction. But without our regular second line center. Er, the lines are understandably eh, kind of fakakta. Eh, we're we're putting the eh, we're putting the freaking eh, perfection line back together. Er, Bergeron, Marchand, and Pasternak on the eh, on the top line. On the second line, we got eh, on the second line. I mean, we got Zaka in the center eh, between eh, between Debrusque eh, between be, between Debrusque and Hall. Shoot, I can't talk. Flino moves up to the third line in in with Coyle and uh, with Coyle and Frederick and fourth line in seems pretty standard. It's uh, it seems exactly like what you would expect. It's uh, it's Nosek, Greer and uh, and Craig Smith. But the first thing that but the first thing that made this game silly is that the Bruins uh, literally have not been uh, have not really been on the ground on for any part of the uh, day today that has been. Uh, that has has had sunlight because they flew in from Vegas this morning, uh, this morning Vegas time. So, uh, so they got they got on the uh, plane at around like uh, like late morning. Thing. So when they got uh, so when they got uh, back to Massachusetts, which is like three, uh, which is three time zones zones later, uh, the bro. Uh, it was already dark out because, is you know, it gets dark at four o'clock now. Not good for my decisional depression. I don't know. Not the not the time to really delve into that. Point is, Bruins don't. Point is, Bruins haven't really uh, seen much sunlight uh, tonight. So when the, uh, so when they walk into the, uh, so they, so when they walk into the, uh, onto the ice and is uh, on. Of TD Garden to start the start the first period. Understandably, they're a little bit uh, discombobulated. Uh, discombobulated. They look a little bit out of position, and and, and the Islanders seem to be uh, getting all the touches. Now, all that happens up until well, the Bruins defense overcommits to one side, and and Anders Lee is left with a wide open shot. Allmark is out of position. He's on the other side of the. He's on the far post. Oh, so he's going to make some. Um, he's going to need to do some acrobatic level, uh, level, uh, level play to get to, uh, to get back to, uh, to the post to let's save this shot, right? No, he just, uh, just shoots. It just has, it is, it just has net, uh, nothing but net right in front of him, and he, he shoots everything but net. But he completely whiffs on the. He completely whiffs on the one timer, or 
right. And just like that, the Bruins are uh, are back in this game. This uh, this play comes at the beginning of uh, near the beginning of five consecutive uh, minutes of just completely uninterrupted play. The Bru- uh, both both teams are are just shuttling out all their lines. They're uh, and nobody's getting any rest. Barely anybody's getting any rest until Zach Parise uh, falls on top of uh, Lena Solmark and the Bru- uh, and the Bruins get a power play. They're gonna play for goaltender and fear. Less than fifty sec- less less than fifteen seconds into the pa- uh, into the power play, uh, McAvoy takes the puck, dumps it off to uh, to uh, David Pasternak. Uh, Pasternak uh, settles the puck and then and blasts it from uh, pretty much the blue line, and he's pretty much just trying to get the puck into the uh, into the fold. And uh, and but DeBrusque, Jake DeBrusque, my boy, he's just he's just right at the crease, deflects it downward. And goes right through. It goes right through the wickets of uh, Semyon Verlamov. Bruins are up one nothing. Less than tw- and then less than twenty seconds later, Jake Debrus, uh, Jake Debrus again, and has the puck on his stick. He's uh, he's trying to pass it. He's trying to do a backhand pass to forward. Uh, but Josh Bailey, oh oh, protect Josh Bailey. That dude is going to be in in dang it. That's, that dude's gonna make you know, Steve Steve staying this uh, this Thursday because uh, what he does is he sticks his puck he sticks his stick out to uh, to try and uh, and cut off the pass as you know a normal defenseman would do but he, he sticks it at such an angle that uh, it uh, that the puck ricochets off his stick and into the uh, and into the net and I can tell that Josh Bailey was just like <sighs> unlucky but you know what. Sometimes, sometimes luck seems to uh, level out a few times. Uh, luck seems to level out in your, uh, sometimes. And, I mean, Jake DeBrus, uh, off of that, got his second goal of the night in less than uh, 20 seconds. And then, uh, and then you know, Josh Bailey you know, is like, damn, I've been having really, really bad luck tonight. Let's do something big to make my you know, luck be, you know, luck go, uh, luck go funky tonight. And so Noah Dobson shoots from, it's from pretty much the blue line, and the puck ricochets off of forward, and then and right off of Josh Bailey's is is freaking skate right into the net for uh, to uh, to get the to cut the lead to one. Josh Bailey ba- basically just went from uh, just went from the unluckiest uh, person on the planet to uh, to my guy just just buy a lottery ticket right now. Hey, you know what? I can't really put that. Uh, I can't really put that on Allmark. I can't really put that against him. Um, not because, uh, not because this was a save that the uh, that the Bruins desperately needed to have. This was uh, because that's because even with the ricocheting, uh, you can't. Uh, even with the ricocheting, uh, this was definitely uh, something that was very savable for Allmark. But I can't really put it past. Uh, but I can't really put it past him. Much like Josh Bailey put the puck past. Uh, still mark on this one. I can't really put it past him because uh, because he was playing electric tonight. Like, like, I don't understand how anybody other than like Jake Ottinger is in the is in in the same realm of Vesna uh, conversation as Linus Allmark has been. And this was just a this was just a bad goal. This was just a uh, bad luck goal that he had uh, let in. So. I can't really put it past him. Second period starts, and uh, second period starts, and, and pretty soon enough, there's a uh, there's a four on four with McAvoy drawing a tripping tri- tripping penalty, and then ten minute, and then ten seconds later, uh, DeBrusque uh, ends up uh, causing a triple a tripping penalty. Uh, we get a minute fifty of uh, of four on four, up until Mac Grizzly. I love you, Grizzly, but that is very much, uh, but that is very much high sticking. And uh, 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 but the funniest thing about this one is that uh, is that the ref accidentally said is that the official accidentally said uh, number Bruins number forty nine in two minutes for high sticking, and uh, and Jack and Andy uh, joked that uh, Rich Peverly has been uh, penalized in retirement. Anyway, both anyway, all three penalties end up uh, end up dying, and 
Uh, and it's here that I uh, start to realize that the Bruins just kind of, uh, the Bruins have been really bad at getting the puck out of their own, own zone. Like this was something that I noticed even during the bubble back, even during uh, the, uh, uh, even during like the 2021 in playoffs, like what killed us in that, in that series against the Islanders was we could not get the puck out of our own, own zone. And so, uh, and so when Noah adopts it, and ends up nailing a one timer through traffic, uh, through traffic, uh, because uh, because the only time we uh, man- because the only time the puck manages to leave our uh, zone after like uh, for like two minutes, even uh, unless we accidentally uh, clear it, is just the Islanders bring it back just to uh, just to do a line change. And I I wasn't surprised that the Bruins uh, that the Bruins led in this goal because they looked bad they looked this this Bruins team did not look good and then AJ Greer goes for uh, roughing and it's like the Bruins uh, said oh shoot there's a game uh, oh shoot that's right we're playing a, playing a hockey game and just shorthanded opportunities galore they got one two three opportunities against Semyon Verlamov in, uh, in the uh, during this penalty kill and the uh, and the cherry on the cake the the cherry on top of the icing, on top of the cake. Uh, uh, Jake DeBrus passed it back to Pavel Zaka. Uh, Zaka passed it through the slot to uh, to Derek Forbort, who uh, who shoots it off the uh, off the post, off the crossbar, uh, to net his first shorthanded goal in over uh, in eight years of NHL play. I did not go into this game um, thinking that uh, there's gonna be a short-handed goal, but honestly, the short-hand goal just adds to the silliness. This and the Bruins end up uh, Bruins end up uh, taking three-two lead into the uh, into the third period, where yet again the Bruins cannot get the puck out of their own uh, zone, and it ends um, and it ends with the worst-case scenario. Oh, that being Casey Sezikis uh, is doing what he does and somehow and somehow managing to find a way to score against the Bruins. He wasn't even trying to score. He was trying to uh, send. He was trying to get it from the back of the back of the net to the set uh, to the center. It just happened to bounce off of or, uh, of Derek Forbert, uh, back and into the net. Uh, that one, I, I I don't know. I uh, that one is just uh, that one's a mix of uh, bad luck because how did it get there? Uh, and then you watch the uh, the previous uh, minute thirty uh, of the Bruins just. Completely failing to play, uh, to play any sort of effective defense, and and you realize, oh shit, that's how. Bro, uh, this was definitely a real. This was definitely a bad. Uh, this was another really bad uh, period for the Bruins. Uh, it's just capped off with the fact that it uh, just capped off with uh, with freaking David Pasternak being put in a spin cycle. And I don't mean that as in he got spin around. I mean in that as in in he gets pushed to the ground like uh, like three times in, over the course of 10 seconds and uh, and the dude is just tumbling and in, around on the ice like he's uh, like he's legitimately caught in a washing machine anyway mimicking the last, anyway mimicking in the last five minutes of the previous period uh, the Bruins finally look good again in the in the Ford F-150 final thought uh, getting uh, getting so many good opportunities against uh, against Samyon Varlamov, but I feel like the I honestly feel like the you know refs just missed a few uh, cross checking penalties. There were like, there were one or two times where uh, where Bruins player uh, just got uh, just got shoved to the ground um, from the back, uh, and it's like come on, just call something. Anyway, neither player anyway neither team scores, so to overtime we go. Oh, and uh, and this was another one where the uh, and this time the Bruins actually came to play, uh, getting in amazing, amazing opportunities against uh, for Alamov. Uh, but uh, but then in Jean Gabriel Pajot, oh, JG Pajot ends up uh, ends up with the puck on a in complete breakaway, and Allmark just stonewalls him completely, uh, just. You will not get. You shall not pass. The Bruins completely outplayed the. Uh, now the Bruins completely outplayed the Islanders in the Islanders in overtime, um, but neither team scores in overtime. So to the shootout we go. The most uh, the most anticlimactic way to 
and to end the end the game. First up is Coil. He, uh, first up is Coil. He tries to dangle all the hell out of uh, Semyon Varlamov. He makes it. Uh, Varlamov makes the kick save. If, oh well, we uh, oh well, we're you uh, don't score on the first one. Second one, uh, first one uh, for the Islanders. Matt Barzell oh uh, completely. Uh, Matt Barzell does the typical uh, slow down like uh, slow down like fifteen feet away from the uh, goal. Uh, keep tapping the puck and then and just uh, and then just bolt and uh, and it works. He gets it past. Uh, Stonemark, I'm like, ah, god damn it, we're down on one nothing in the you know, shootout. Then we get to Jake Brusque. Uh, then we get to Jake Brusque, the two goal old man of the night. He uh, he uh, just goes off like a rocket and uh, shoots from pretty much the uh, shoots from pretty much the uh, the uh, the middle of the faceoff circle and uh, and just gets it past uh, and gets it past Varlamov. Honestly, I do I do kind of like those. Those goals because it feels almost like because yes it's risky but at the same time you're going in, in so fast and you're you're going in so fast that uh, that it's almost like a surprise that they're uh, that you're shooting from that far out and and hey this time it actually worked. Ragnas goes for the Islanders it uh, it doesn't work and then oh my god I did not I did not truly grasp how insane david posnock's pump fake was is but after this but after this uh after this uh, shootout i think i might need a sick back pump fakes uh, svarlamov out of his freaking pants and uh, and goes around uh, goes around and and backhands it in and to put the bronze up to nothing and it's all down to the luck man tonight and it's all down to the uh, to Lady Luck tonight and Josh Bailey uh, to see if this goes, goes any further. This time, Luck was not on his side. He, he, Omar saves it. Bruins win for uh, Bruins won in the shootout. Now, I have been on record saying that uh, saying that this is coming uh, that uh, the upcoming part of the schedule is sort of like a part two of the gauntlet that we just uh, that we just came out of uh, with a six two and one record. And honestly. I'm willing to change my mind on that because the next few games that we have are against the it's the LA Kings who just lost six nothing to uh, to the uh, Buffalo Sabers, and then after that the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, who are one of the worst teams in the entire league right now. Oh, uh, then we got the Florida Panthers who did beat us uh, during that gauntlet, and it and it kind of stings, and then in the and then to end it, and to and then to end in what I've been calling the gauntlet part two, well, we have uh, two really bad. We have two really good uh, teams as part of uh, as part of a back to back. On the first part, we're home against the uh, we're home against Winnipeg, uh, who's eight, uh, who is eighteen eight and one, uh, who went into tonight to tonight eighteen eight and one, and then. Uh, and then on the other half of the back-to-back, the dreaded New Jersey Devils. I think the Browns are going to come out of this one uh, looking a lot better than uh, than, la- uh, than the gauntlet. Yes, I do. I think that the Browns are going to uh, at most lose two games. I, I can see us maybe losing in overtime against, against Winnipeg. At the same time, I can see us winning in that one in overtime. I can see it, uh, and I can just lose us, see us losing outright to uh, I can just see us losing outright to uh, to the Devils, but at the same time, I can see us winning. I don't know. I can see, I can see the floor for uh, for this team for the uh, for this mini gauntlet uh, up to the end of uh, up till Christmas being. Uh, uh, I can see the floor for this team being in eight points and the uh, and the ceiling being the perfect twelve. So with that, I think it's time for uh, for me to wrap this up and get back to the finals. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Quick like if you like. Quick subscribe if you really like. Up there is my most recent video. Down there is my uh, Twitch.tv and my uh, and also uh, the donation link to Tampa Bay Thrives to you know, to help out kids who are uh, struggling with mental health issues uh, and uh, and body image issues. Anyways, I will see you guys again on Thursday. Take care.